A game-changing model designed by scientists at Palmerston North's Reddit Institute is being used worldwide to generate informed discussion about global food system sustainability. The Institute's Deputy Director, Professor Warren McNabb, leads the project with model development headed by Dr Nick Smith. We wanted to build a model that would allow people to see what changes to global food production are going to mean for the nutrition of the global population in the future. Because we think it's really important that when you're making changes to what food you're going to produce, that you understand what that's going to mean for what people eat and then their health. When most people hear sustainability, they immediately think environmental sustainability, right? But there's a lot more to sustainability than just the environment. And if you're going to have a sustainable food system, it has to be sustainable in terms of people's nutrition, the economics of producing it, as well as the environmental sustainability. So you have to take all of those factors into consideration. So we've had quite a large team of people work on the model over about the last three years. And what we've done is we've taken global food production data, so that's all from UN sources. We've worked out how much of that actually shows up as food and is eaten. And then we've converted that into the nutrients that people consume and compared it to what the global population actually needs. The model development's all been led out of the Reddit Institute here, but we've got partners all over the world, particularly Wageningen University in the Netherlands, University of Lincoln in the UK, Sao Paulo in Brazil, and also Monash over in Australia, along with a number of other New Zealand agencies who've helped us out with various parts along the way. The model is a work in progress still. The nutrition side of the model is really strong at the moment, but as I mentioned, we really need all aspects of sustainability included in there. So what we're doing currently is building land use footprints into the model as well, so you can see how much land is going to be required to produce the amount of food. Uh, and in the future, we'd like to also include things like greenhouse gas emissions related to production to get a more holistic picture. So largely what the Delta model does is look at the globe as a whole. So we're looking at total production and average requirements of the world's population. Uh, we're not breaking down to individual regions or countries. We've got some other work that's covering that. So Delta is really looking at that global picture. There's a few really interesting results that we've had so far. Uh, the first major one is that it's not food energy or protein that's really the problem at a global level. We are producing enough of those for our population at the moment and for much larger populations in the future. What the challenge is, is the micronutrients. So things like our minerals and vitamins, we're not actually producing and making available through food enough of those to meet the needs of the population at the moment. Having enough energy and protein is one thing. Those are essential parts of the human diet. But without the micronutrients, things like iron, things like calcium, you're going to have micronutrient deficiencies with real impacts on health and quality of life. So having the macronutrients is good, but we really need to have everything that the human body requires available in enough quantities for the world's population. So while our staple crops and cereals give us a lot of food energy, if that's not necessarily what we need, maybe we need to be looking at more nutrient-dense foods, foods that we can get those micronutrients, those vitamins and minerals from. Seafood and aquaculture production is all featured in the Delta model, and we can see the importance of that. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty around what's going to be possible with that in the future. Aquaculture is booming at the moment, really increasing globally, whereas our wild capture fisheries are something we're having to be a, a little bit more careful about. I'm feeling optimistic that we can feed a much larger population in the future, but that is going to depend on us making the right choices now. And our choices now have to be evidence-based. So we can't just make changes that are economically sound or just environmentally sound. We have to think about the full picture of food system impacts. And that's what the Delta model is really helping to inform. The Delta model, you can have access to that on the website, Sustainable Nutrition Initiative website, and it's available to anybody. So um, all you do is you email us and we'll give you a password um, and you can go in there and you can play with it. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've put on a nice user-friendly and reasonably easy to use front end that hides the big engine behind um, that helps um, you, anyone who wants to use it.
Um, we're, we're working with a lot of organisations, government departments, private companies, in um, helping them understand what the model is and how to use it effectively. Um, but we really um, are very interested in as many people using it as possible. It's, um, it's not a model to get answers. Um, it's a model to ask questions. And it's all about wanting to have a high quality conversations about the future of feeding people. And that's how we've designed that model. It's a scenario testing model. So the more people who are on their scenario testing, the better. The Delta model and all the models that we're um, going to be developing in the future, it's our intention that they're um, free of charge and available to, to really everybody who wants to, to go in there and use them.